Italian house. Wasn't that worship wonderful? Thank you, Steve. And the Andrea. It's just great when we are in God's house. Because he promised, and this is not a human promise, he said wherever his children are, he will be there. And that is awesome, really, that God is here. Because he is the one who promised that. So he's here with us today. <coughs> Let me take care of technology. This morning we'll continue in the series that uh, we started a few weeks ago, uh, a Lakeside Summer Series, and uh, today Beach Miracle is what I'll be talking about. We've heard about the calling of the first disciples, uh, the coming of the storm last week that uh, uh, Pastor Mark talked about, and there will be some overlap because it's from the same passage that uh, I'm speaking this morning. Jesus walking on water. And next week, Adrian Morris will be speaking about the coin in the fish's mouth. And the week after that, uh, we're going to hear from Donald Halliwell about Jesus reinstating Peter. Nice uh, little series uh, about miracles uh, that happened by the seaside, uh, the Sea of Galilee. Jesus walking on water. This is uh, something you, many of us here know very well about. And uh, when you hear about uh, preaching or speaking on something you know about, uh, there can be, uh, oh, I've heard it before. But I believe that the Lord will speak to us today. Uh, even though you've heard it before, I just pray that you hear something new from him this morning. So if you've got your Bibles, please open to Matthew chapter 14. And we we'll read from verse 25 to uh, 32. And it's on the screen. If you want to look, read it from the screen on the NIV version. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him. Truly, you are the Son of God. And I think really that is what it is all about. Truly, you are the Son of God. Right from creation, as I was thinking about what to speak on today, I was struck by the fact that God has always wanted to come to us. He is God, we are human. He is in heaven, we are on earth. He is spiritual, we are natural. He does everything to get our attention. He will break natural laws to get our attention. To get us to the point that say, truly, you are the Son of God. I will walk on water so that you are able to say, truly, you are the Son of God. He wants your attention and he will do everything because he wants us to know him. He wants us to be like him. He will break his own, his own laws. We don't walk on water. 
but he will break that law to get your attention. That is what it is all about today. You can fall asleep now if you like, but that is what it is all about today, to get your attention, to get Peter's attention, that truly this is the Son of God, and he wants us to do the same. So there has been an interface, and I'll just mention a few of them, between God and us, Emmanuel, God with us. When Jesus Christ came, God has come to us. But even before then, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, crossing the Red Sea, you don't cross a sea on land, you go in a boat. But he parted the waters for the children to cross on land and to know him, that I am God and I can change the natural laws for you. You don't have to go in the boat. You don't have to swim. You are going to walk right through the middle of the sea. It has never happened before. But he wanted the children of Israel to know that he is God who can do all things. And he wants you to know that he is God who can do all things in your life. With God, all things are possible. And he will change things for you and you alone. So he did that. Now, if you want water, you don't go to the rock, do you? There's nothing in a rock. There's no way you will ever get water out of a rock. He changed the natural laws that water will come out from a rock. How is that? To get your attention. For you to know that I am God indeed, the maker of heaven and earth, and I can do all things for you. He doesn't need to do it for himself. No. He has no benefit in that for himself. It is you who benefit. It is I who benefit to see water coming out from the rock. He did that. How about making the sun to stand still? Can we do that? Joshua had business to do. He had not enough time. There was no time to finish the instruction God has given him. God said, Joshua, talk to the son to stand still. He did that. The son stood still until business was finished. God has time for you. He will wait for you. Time will stand still for you in a way that you can finish the business, the mission he has given you. There is enough time. We are the ones bound by time. He is not bound by time. He will break through. He will change his rules. He will change his regulations for you and for me. That is how much he loves you. Jesus died for us. He shed his blood. How precious is that? Therefore, he will do everything for you. The son stood still until Joshua had finished the business that God gave him. And Jesus came to show that as well. He has power over the spiritual world. It's not just the natural world. He cast out demons, as we saw in the story of Legion. As, you know, this particular walking on water, he went to the other side. He met a man coming from the tombs called Legion. What's your name? My name is Legion. He cast out demons from that man and from many others. This is just a few examples. He has power over the spiritual world. So whatever might be holding you, whether it's witchcraft, we talk a lot about that in Africa, he has power over all of that. And he that is in you now is greater than witchcraft or whatever. That's how much he loves you, to give you all that power. He has power over nature. That's what we are talking about today. And that's what I've been talking about. He breaks his own laws, if I can put it that way, the natural law, to get to us, for us to know him. He has power over human nature, your nature. So he can make us, he can re remake us, he can heal us. He can do all of that. Things that human beings can do, God can do, Jesus Christ can do. And that is what all this series is about. That I love you, and I am powerful, and I can do all things for you. He healed the centurion's servant from afar off. Now, I'm a doctor. I can't heal you from afar off. 
you have to come to my office. I have to, I have to sharpen my knife and things like that. <laughs> but he said, go, your servant is healed from afar off. He can do all of those. These are just a tiny example of what Jesus has done, is doing, and he wants us to do. He wants us to do. He has power to forgive sins and to heal. And the one thing that many in the world are afraid and worried about, he has power over death. With him, when we are here, he say he is with us. When we die, we go to be with him. And Paul said, which one is better? Actually, for Paul, he said, it's better for me to go to be with you. The story is that many of us want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> Paul said, it's better, but it is more needful. I've got a job to do, so I'm staying here until you call me home. He has power over death. He has demonstrated that again and again in this world. So Jesus walking on water, what was that all about? It was a demonstration of who Jesus is. He is the Son of God. I and my Father, we are one. What I do is what I see my Father do. But he demonstrated this for us to know him, but for us also to be able to do these things in time. That is what it is all about about. Philip asked, show us the Father. He said, Philip, why are you asking that kind of a question? What kind of a question is that? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me, the miracles that I do, these are the things that my Father do. You are seeing the Father being demonstrated in your presence. This is what the Father does. This is what we know about today. We can read it. We can experience it by the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work in us. We know that. This is the work of the Father. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, has come to show the Father. He has gone to give us the Spirit that tells us about the Father and about the Son as well. And make us overcomers to be like Jesus. Walking on water. So Peter asked, Lord, if it is you, let me come to you. And that, to me, is a very, very important, if it is you. We can look at it in another way. Who are you? Peter is saying. If it is you, let me work on these waters. And he says, come. Are you the son of God? He says, yes, I am. And I will demonstrate that by you walking on water. He is the God that provides for you when you are in need. Lord, I am in need. And he says, I am the Jehovah Jireh. I am the God that provides. God, I am troubled. He said, I am the God of peace, the Jehovah Shalom. Lord, I feel I'm all by myself. He is, I am the God who is present, who is here with you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. God, I am afraid. You say, I am almighty. With me, all things are possible. You are the apple of my eye and nothing can touch you. In your life today, whatever the problem is, God wants to demonstrate to you that I am, I am the God who can solve that problem. That is what Peter was asking. If you are, who are you? And whatever your problem, you need a healing today. He is the God that heals. Lord, demonstrate. Lord, I want to feel a part of your healing power today. I want to know you. Lord, I feel unworthy. I am the God, your righteousness today. I am the one that will cleanse you today. I am the one that will make you new today. Maybe nobody thinks you are worth anything. You are precious in my eyes. I died for you. I shed my blood for you. Don't let anyone say you are useless. You are useful. You have been saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And he wants you to know him more and more in any way. Whatever, wherever you are, whether it's a wonderful place you are, whether it's a difficult place you are today, he wants you to know him that he is able 
to take care. And by the way, all this time that Peter was walking through on the water, the storm never ceased. It hadn't ceased. And yet, he was walking towards Jesus Christ. He says, come. What is your need? He says, come. I'm able to fulfill that. So what did Peter do? Peter walking on water. He asked. We have lots of promises. I know the plans I have for you. You will be the head and not the tail. Every piece of land you walk on is yours. Yes, but we still have to ask. There's an active step in all of these things. We have lots and lots of promises, but we still need to ask God. We still need to walk into them. He said, ask, seek, and knock. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He is knocking. You have to open the door. I have to open the door. He is at the door already. The door of my house to my sitting area is only three, four, five meters. That's how close. I can hear the knock. I can hear the bell for any, any, any area of my house. Jesus is near. Whatever the situation is, is in your life, he is knocking. I want to come in. He gives of himself. You know, he doesn't give you a token of peace, a token of joy. He gives himself because he is the peace. He is the joy. He is the healer. You don't get a token. You get the whole thing. You get Jesus Christ. So he stands. Ask. Peter asked. There were others in the boat. They did not ask. They never walked on water. He asked. He walked on water. Ask. Don't say, oh, the Lord knows. He knows everything. Yes, he does. But he say, ask. Seek. Knock. There are active things about the promises of God. We still need to fetch it. We still need to pluck the fruit down. He's given us talents. We still need to trade with them and make profit. There are things for us to do. He wanted to know Jesus, if it is you. He was focused on Jesus. He said, well, that looks cool, Jesus Christ, you're walking on the lake. How about me? I'd like to do the same. No, the focus on if it is you, let me walk towards you, not away from Jesus Christ, not somewhere else, not to shove to the other 10 or 11 in the boat, see how I can walk on water. Whatever we ask, whatever we need, let it be focused on Jesus Christ. We say, according to the will of God. James say, we ask and we do not receive. Because when we ask, we want to boast about it. We want to do something with it. We are not focused on the giver. We are focused on the gift. He was focused on Jesus. He was also courageous. Jesus, I said, don't be afraid, be courageous. All this while, the storm was still raging. It hasn't stopped. It would have been nice, you know, calm everything down. Ah, that's better now, I can come towards you, Jesus. No. The storm was still raging. The boats were being tossed from side to side. Everyone else was still afraid. Nothing has changed in the natural. Nothing has changed. When he stepped out, we want everything to be sorted before we step out. Let's see how it goes, and then now, yeah. I don't want to be the fool. I don't want to, I don't want to get my fingers burnt. He stepped out when the storm was still raging. You step out when it still looks like a failure. He is never too late. Step out. That gives glory to him. You are saying, Lord, I can see all the problems around me. I can see the difficulties around me, but I am stepping out of my boat. I'm not waiting until it is calm. I will step out now. But I will look unto you. And that is what Peter did. And he stepped out. And while he was still walking on the sea, on, on the lake, the storm was still raging. The boats were still tossing. It was still a bit dark. Not a nice time to be on a, on a lake. Dark, storm, everything. Are you in a dark place? Are you in a stormy place? Look unto Jesus. Be focused on him and walk towards him. He acted. He stepped out. Jesus said, come, and he did. Sometimes he said, come, I said, ah, I'll wait until. 
something else. No, he stepped out, he acted, he walked on water. Unfortunately, his uh, experience ended when he changed his focus. His focus went away from Jesus Christ, back to himself. Oh, little me, can I handle all these problems? They are all coming at me. Everybody is my enemy. They are trying to get me. It's just me and me alone. There's no one else with me. And suddenly we forget that the Lord is the friend that sticks closer than a brother that is close to you at all times. We begin to focus on us. It's just me. I don't have a degree. I don't have any money. I'm the only one here. They're all against me. The whole world is against me. No. He is with you. He said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. He began to think. He started thinking about himself. He started thinking about the magnitude of, of the problem around him. And there are times he said, no, this problem is not, this war is not for you to fight, Jehoshaphat. It's for me, the battle belongs to the Lord. I am the one who will fight for you. This battle is mine. You just watch and see your deliverance. And there are times, that is what it is, just to focus on Jesus. You know, when he began to drown and sink, he was actually closest to Jesus Christ. Jesus was near enough to hold him. Sometimes when we think it's all gone, that's it, that's me, they've got me now, Jesus is nearest to you at that time. And when he was thinking, I said, save me. Well, I was trying to think, what happened then? Did Jesus just hold him up? Did he carry him up? Did he hold his hand? But he was there for him. Jesus was closer at his time of trouble than ever before. Now, whether he carried him back to the boat like a baby, or he held him back to the boat, who he just walked with him, Jesus was closest to him. He was in the safest place at that time he could be, with, physically with Jesus Christ. So when you feel that you are the only one left, he is closest to you. Jesus walking on water. So what has been achieved? I say from Jesus' point of view, <clears throat> it is mission accomplished. What do I mean? By the time they got into the boat, what happened? They worshipped him. It's not just the master. Think about the world at that time. You don't worship. The Hebrews don't worship anyone else but the God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth. They don't worship anyone else. Never before then. They worshipped Jesus Christ. And then they said, truly, you are the Son of God. That is what it was all about. For us to know that this is the Son of God. And to worship him. That is what it is about today. When you have been delivered, when God has done something, say, truly, you are the Son of God. And Lord, I worship you. Whatever happens to you, truly, you are my savior. Truly, you are my provider. Truly, you are the God almighty. Truly, you are with me. Truly, you are my peace. Truly, you are my savior, my righteousness. And I worship you. Moses, I like to say this, I want to know you more. How can Moses want to know God more? Nobody knew God like Moses in the Old Testament. God said, I talk to him like a friend. Paul said, I want to know more of God. God was with him. He did all sorts of things. He wrote half of the New Testament. But he said, I want to know you more. Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they know you as Lord and know me as Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And that is what has been achieved. Truly, you are the Son of God. And they worshipped him. How about Peter? 
Mission accomplished. He walked on water. <laughs> he asked and he received. Lord, if it is you, let me come to you. He asked. He was courageous. He was focused for a time. And the Lord honored that. You too ask. Be courageous and act. And God, we honor that as well. He also now knows that Jesus, truly, you are the Son of God. Because you walked on water and you made me walk on water. But he also knew one thing. That it was all about Jesus Christ. And without Christ, he can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Without Christ, we can't do anything. We must be focused on him. We must give all the glory to him. He is the one to be worshipped. He is the one we testify about. Surely the God, our Lord, is good. Without him, we can do nothing. How about you walking on your water and me walking on water? How about you? All these things are done for us to know God and for us to be like him. And that is why he gave us his spirit. In the natural sense, we cannot do anything. So he gave us the Holy Spirit. He said, it's good for me to go away. For when I go away, I will send the helper. I will send the Holy Spirit to be with you at all times. He will teach you all things. He will empower you. He will teach you about the Father. He will testify about the Father and about the Son. He, there are new things. There are so many things I want to tell you. But you can't receive all of them now. But when the Spirit comes, he will teach you all things. What he's saying, there are more things for us to experience than what we've read in the Bible. This is more than enough. But in your, your specific life, there are more things to experience from God. And it takes the Holy Spirit for us to be able to realize that. To know Jesus Christ and to do the things that Jesus did. Why? He said, greater things, more in number will you do. Let us begin to, he says, set our gaze, set your gaze on heaven, on heavenly things. That's where you belong. For Christ is in heaven. Yes, we are natural, just like him. He was human, he was God. He has given us the spirit so that we are spiritual and we are natural. But he's now saying, don't set your gaze here on things on earth that will fade away. But set your gaze on heaven, on things that will last, on Jesus Christ. Remember that you are spiritual. We have been called to dominate our environment. Right from the beginning, God said, I put you in the Garden of Eden. Take care of it. Dominate this place. Not boss it around, but dominate. Just like light dominates darkness. Darkness can never prevail over light. And that's what you are. You are the light he has given you. You are the salt. You stop decay. Dominate your environment. Wherever you are, there is a Christian here. Dominate, dominate in the spiritual realm. Where you are, let demons flee because you have Christ in you. Because you have the power of God. That is what you are. That is why God is showing us all of these things, setting aside his natural laws, because he wants us to be in that area at the interface of the spiritual being, where we are spirit and dominating our natural environment. You are children of God. Our children look like us because they have our DNA. You should look like God because you have the spirit of God. That is what it is all about. And then you walk on your own water. You walk through your own fire and not be burnt. That is where you belong. That is where I belong. And that is why Jesus was trying to show Peter how with faith, without faith it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God. He said, why did you doubt? James said, if we doubt, we're like being tossed up, you know, from one side to the other. We can't be doubting, oh, can he do it, can he not? Can he do it, can he not? No, he is the God of heaven. 
He can do all things. He's shown us throughout, I can stop the sun. I can split the water. I can bring somebody back from the dead who has been dead and he's smelling. I can do all of that. I can forgive sins. I rise from the dead again. I give you my Holy Spirit. I can do all of these things and they are yours. And he doesn't give us in small measure. There isn't a small measure of Jesus Christ. It's the whole. The issue will be our ability to receive, but not what God has given. It's everything. Be courageous. God told Joshua, as I was with Moses, I will be with you, and surely you are going to inherit all of this land. So why was it necessary to say, but be courageous? Because we can draw back. Even though it has been promised, Moses saw the land. That's the land I'm giving you. Joshua, that is the land. He himself testified that the land is good. Himself and Caleb, the land you have given us is good. And now Moses is dead. God is saying to Joshua, but be courageous. We need to be courageous. The Bible is full of, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. Be courageous. Move forward. I am with you all of the time. We need to be courageous. My technology just switched off. I think I was talking too much there. <laughs> I have to. Yeah. Be focused on the author. You say, I'm the author, I'm the beginner, I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the one who will perfect your faith. When do we walk on water? All seasons? In all storms of life, when things are good, when things are bad, he never leaves us. He's always with us. And what is the result of this? So that we are true children of God. What we have inherited, the DNA, people can see, God can see that we are his true children. And all of these things are done to the glory of the Father. Everything we do is to the glory of the Father. We are not going to walk on water for our glory. Peter's attention was on Jesus Christ when he walked on water. Your attention has to be on Jesus Christ, on God, all of the time, in a place of worship, all of the time, to be able to dominate your environment, to come and then there's a calm in the place because you are present, to come to a place and people are smiling because you are there, because you carry the lightness of Jesus Christ. So wherever you go, as a light, as a salt, you make a difference all of the time. That is what it means to be the head. You don't, you don't have to be the head of a company. You might be the messenger. But where you are, there's a difference all of the time. Because Jesus Christ is in you. The storms may keep raging, but he is with you and he will carry you through. These storms stopped when Jesus and Peter were in the boat. Not while he walked on water. Not when the miracle was taking place. It was when everything had finished that the storm stopped. God is saying all of these things to us. I am your father, and I want you to be like me. I want you to do the things that I do. I have sent my son Jesus Christ. I have sent the Holy Spirit. Let us be Christians that walk on water. God bless you.